Welcome back, everybody. So today I want to get into the topic of professionalism. Now, this is something that I've seen happen time and time again that's kind of hindered some people. And what you want is to come off as professional, meaning that you're in a workplace and you take that work very seriously. You don't want to come off that you're like at the bar with your friends, right? So how do we do that? How do we come off as being more professional, okay? So in today's video, that's what we're gonna tackle is what I think are five quick and easy ways for you to kind of come off as being more professional. The first one is your appearance. So the, you know, humans are, are visual creatures. The first thing we're gonna do is judge somebody based on their appearance. Now, that's not to say that to be professional, you have to go to lab in a suit. In fact, that would be kind of odd. I don't really see anybody wearing a suit in the lab, but you want to try your best to give the appearance that you care about the work that you're doing. So maybe instead of wearing um, old sneakers and, and jeans with rips in them and uh, t-shirts with holes in them, maybe you want to invest a little bit of money and get a nicer pair of shoes, some jeans or some dockers or nicer pants that are, you know, no fraying at the bottom, no holes in them or rips, you know, a nice even colored wash, something uh, like a button down shirt or a polo or nice sweaters or nice shirts, you know, not just a Nike shirt with holes all over it that looks like something you would wear to the gym you know, take the time to bathe correctly. We should all be doing that. But if you do that, you're going to give off the impression that you're you're a more professional than if you're just simply wearing clothes that you would wear to a bar or something that you would wear to, you know, the gym, right? So we want to try to avoid that. The second thing is timeliness and preparedness. There's a really good saying that I heard um, from a football coach and it goes like this, it, it says, if you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. And if you're late, you're out of here. Meaning that if the meeting starts at 12 o'clock, if you wanna be on time to that meeting, you're there at 11.55. If you're there at 12, you're already running late. And if you get there after 12, that's not, a, you know, it's inexcusable, you shouldn't be late. Now, in actuality, yes, sometimes, you know, you have a meeting before that goes from 11 to 12, and maybe that meeting runs over a minute, and then you have to move to a new room to get to the next meeting, and so you're a little bit late. Or maybe something comes up in the lab that's unexpected, and so you're a minute late to whatever meeting you're at. But in general, what you want to be doing is aiming to always be on time, which for a meeting should actually be a couple minutes early. You don't want to be getting there right when the meeting starts. So be early to your meetings. And when you come to whatever meeting it is, make sure that you are prepared. So if you're having a one-on-one -on -one with your PI, you're going to want to have whatever, you know, notes that you need to take, you know, so a notebook, pen, paper, you're gonna maybe wanna have a list of what activities you did for the last week. Maybe at the at your fingertips, you're gonna want those data to be able to show them or your ELN, your, your lab notebook to show them. You know, whatever it is that you're gonna need to do with your PI, you wanna have those ready. You don't wanna be sitting there in the meeting fumbling around trying to find anything, right? Because you know that's what you're gonna be discussing. You wanna seem like you're prepared for that meeting. Like, okay, if they ask about this data, this is how I'm gonna show them and I, I have that ready to go. Same thing if you go to a meeting and it's about, you know, planning for a seminar discussion. You're gonna to wanna to have all of the different panelists that you might wanna be inviting ready to go or whatever topics you wanna to discuss up in this meeting ready to go. Whatever the meeting is, it's gonna be different, but you're gonna to wanna to be on time, meaning early, and you're gonna to wanna to be prepared for that meeting. And that's also gonna boost your productivity and your organization as well. So this is a really good one. The next thing is um, understanding that you are not at a bar or out with friends and that you're at work and keeping your work conversations as professional as you can. So it's very easy for us to become good friends and close with those around us that we work with, right? So you're gonna probably spend more time with the coworkers that you work with than even with your own family. 
So you start to become, you know, close with those that you work with. And that's fine. That's good. You want to have good, solid work relationships. But what you want to remember is that you are not at the bar with your best friend. So if you become friendly with somebody at work, so let's say that there's a, a, a guy that I worked with, there's a few different guys uh, over my career that I've worked with that I became friends with and we would hang outside of work. Um, the conversations we had outside of work were different than what we had inside work. So when you're outside of work, you're, you're, you're out of the office, you can talk and have fun the way you want. But when you're at work, you gotta keep it appropriate, right? So you gotta, you know, watch the whatever kind of jokes that you might make or offhanded comments that you might make. The discussions you have at work should really be focused around work. And yeah, it's fine with your coworkers to get to know them and talk about their family or your family or, you know, talk about what you did over the weekend. But you shouldn't be talking about anything that's not, you know, really work related um, or or safe for for work discussion. The next thing is keeping an open mind to other viewpoints. So one of the ways that you could come off as unprofessional or childish is to not be open to new ideas, okay? So as you progress through your career, you're going to be exposed to more and more people and more and more ideas. And no matter how open-minded we try to be, there's always going to be people that come and have ideas that are totally different than ours. They could be religious viewpoints, they could be political viewpoints. You know, we're in a scientific lab, so there's always gonna be scientific discourse and there's gonna be debate. That's what makes science really good, is that it's always gonna be a big discussion and you gotta try your best to let the data tell you where you should be heading, right? And that's a hard skill and it takes time, but eventually we, we get better at letting the data tell us where we should go. But as we do that, we're gonna be forming hypotheses, right? That That's the scientific method. We get data, we think about what it means and we form our next hypothesis. And somebody might look at that same piece of data and form a different hypothesis or think that there's a better way that you could test the hypothesis even if they have the same hypothesis. And just because someone has those differences in ideas doesn't mean that you need to just shut them out right away because they don't have the same idea. It makes you come off as very childish and, childish and unprofessional. You need to be open-minded to what others are saying around you and think about how you can incorporate those ideas into your idea to make something even better than what you originally came up with. And that type of collaborative like effort and mindset is really what's gonna set people apart. So the, the last point that I wanted to make is that um, science doesn't always work and experiments don't always work. And it doesn't matter how long you've been in the lab or how good you are in the lab. Experiments are going to fail for one reason or another. Sometimes things out of our control, sometimes things in our control. But I could tell you as somebody that's managed other people, um, one of the big distinguishers between somebody that acts very professional and someone that doesn't is for the exact same experiment that fails, the unprofessional um, individual will come to me and say, you know, 101 reasons why it didn't work, when the, the reality is that it's something that they did or it's something that they could control. And the professional one is gonna come to me and they're gonna say, my experiment didn't work, I know why it didn't work, this is what happened, I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. And that's fine. No one's going to be upset because an experiment didn't work. That's part of science. Everybody in science gets that. Even the hardest PIs understand that not every experiment is going to work. But there's a big difference between the person that takes responsibility for it and says, yeah, this is where I messed up. I know this is what went wrong. I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. And the person that tries to blame every other factor outside of themselves. Um, it, it's really... Um, comes across as, as not professional. So I think these are just five quick and easy ways that we could try to act more professional within a lab setting. Um, if you have others, let me know down below. I'm interested to hear stories about people and, and, and what you've come across as being, wow, this seems really professional, like that's really good. Or what you've seen and you're like, oh, like this is not professional behavior um, and things that people should avoid. 
Um, and with that, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.